Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Self-Publishing, a guide to publishing your book from first draft to release date by Emma Rosen. Emma Rosen, of course, Emma Rosen Books here on YouTube, AuthorTube, BookTube, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't have a huge number of tabs, but I'm going to go through those anyway. Uh, first off, I'm going to share the blurb, then I'll go through the tabs, then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. Can't imagine it'll be a super long review, but then it's not a super long book. It's very much like an introduction to the topic. Dane reads... You've written a book, what next? Publishing your own book can be a daunting process. At each complex stage, you need to make creative and business decisions to make the most out of your work. Self-publishing takes you through each part of the process, including editing, design, formatting, publishing options, and marketing. With clear explanations and practical tips, this book makes publishing your book easier and more enjoyable. Whether you're new to self-publishing or an established indie author looking for new ways to promote your work, there is something in this book for you. So. Let's go through, check out some of my tabs. So into the planning section here. So one of the points Emma makes here, she says, maybe you dream of your book winning self-published book of the year. That award doesn't exist, but maybe it should. Maybe it should. Somebody should do that. And here she talks about how much money it's gonna cost. And I would say this about ties in with um, my experience as well. So she writes, realistically, self-publishing can be expensive. You can spend anything between a few hundred pounds to a few thousand, depending on the decisions you make. As you do your research, you will need to consider the cost implications. Often there are multiple options with different associated costs. Knowing your budget and then allocating that to stages of the publishing process, keeping your goals in mind, will help you to plan your route. So here we have a bit on the business. And um, so she writes about setting up a company and she writes this about being a sole trader slash sole proprietorship, which is what I am registered as. And bear in mind as well, this covers me not just for um, my books but also for my freelance work so she writes it will probably suit most people to function as a sole trader this type of company does not require registration you will however need to register for self-assessment and file a tax return every year as well as keeping records of your income and expenditure in general this is a simple type of company to run you keep any profits and losses can be carried over however the name of your company is not protected in the same way so if you have branding associated to this you may wish to investigate registering for copyright um, I've just paid my tax as well, £5,100, lot of tax. Uh, and she nails this point here, which is, I would agree, one of the, basically the main way you can tell whether a book has been self-published or whatever. So it says, uh, under the editing section, this book isn't a guide to writing, look for craft books for help with that. So I'm going to jump in at the editing phase. Firstly, I have to make it clear that you must edit your book. I cannot emphasize this enough. Too many self-published books go out without sufficient editing, and it's the number one thing that will make your book amateurish, in my opinion. In my opinion, also, Emma. And she writes under, uh, again, in this section under professional editors, uh, about the rates that are charged. Rates for editing will vary, but make sure you know what is typically charged. The Chartered Institute of Editors and Proofreaders, the CIEP, currently set minimum hourly rates at £34.40 for development or substantive editing, £29.90 for copy editing, and £25.70 for proofreading. So, interestingly enough, my rate was £35, and I did editing. Um, but uh, I've recently upgraded it this year to £40 an hour. Uh, under illustration, she, t she talks about, um, she says, uh, if you're capable of producing suitable digital or physical art, there's no reason why you can't do it all yourself. If it's good enough for Roger Hargreaves and Beatrix Potter, it's good enough for anyone. And I have been reading Roger Hargreaves. So there we go. And uh, in terms of what to spend on a book cover, she says, you're looking to spend in the region of 300 to 600 pounds. I spend about 80 for mine, um, but I have quite a good relationship with my cover designer. And actually, I do appreciate that she's kind of on the cheap end, but she does really good work. Um, an important point on pricing as well, she said, um, so uh, you'll probably find the website automatically populates prices from other territories once you've added your price in dollars. I personally try a few different numbers and look at the royalties to help me decide whether I'm happy with my pricing. You should then go through all the territories and change the prices to commonly used numbers, ending in 99 or 49 rather than random numbers, um, which is exactly what I do as well. I should also mention that each of the sections in this comes with like a list of resources that you can go to for further info. There's a section on formatting for print, um, which is very important. I think she kind of leads with the idea of publishing an ebook, but also does talk about publishing for print. And this is one of my big bugbears here. She says, there are one or two standard considerations for formatting. There is no longer a double space after a full stop. Hasn't been for about 30, 40 years. Think about it this way, you're saving on the print cost for all those extra spaces. It probably amounts to a few pages. If you've used double spaces, don't worry. It's not necessary to edit each one individually. Do a document search for the double spaces and replace all with a single space. That is actually 
the first thing I do for any proofreading or editing job that I get hired to do is, is to check for double spaces. So this is something I did learn actually because I've never quite, well I've never really researched what the different types of binding are. So she says, you will need to select a binding type. Paperback books may be available perfect bound, pages glued to the spine, or saddle bound, books stapled through the middle. Hardcover books are generally available cloth bound or case laminate where the cover is printed with your cover design and may come with or without a dust jacket. So I always use perfect bound and now I'm glad I do because I know what that means. She also says you can usually choose white or cream paper. White paper looks good and ages well. Cream may be more reader friendly due to the reduced contrast, particularly for those with dyslexia. You might also be able to select different paper weights or printing qualities. There are resources online comparing different options and the sites usually give guidance on what the alternatives mean. So I always use cream paper. Again, I think it's, um, I find it more reader friendly and more enjoyable. I think it makes for a more professional looking book. And finally, in the acknowledgements, she shouts out our very own Charles Heathcote for being a beta reader. So shout out to Charlie for doing that, good lad. So, self-publishing, a guide to publishing your book from first draft to release date by Emma Rosen. I gave this a pretty weak four out of five, but that's still pretty good. I mean, my average, I, I rate things, um, 3.5 is a professionally quality, a professional quality book. So it's above, above standard there. It's like really beautiful, actually. Uh, the layout's very good. You can tell that she's, she's applying her own lessons in this one. Uh, for me, I don't know if there's a huge amount I learned other than about the different types of binding, but this is perfect for me when I'm working with a client who wants to self-publish because they'll often ask me a lot of questions and they'll want to know about the process. And it just means that in the future I can say, just read Emma's book, it will tell you everything you need to know. So thank you, Emma, for saving me some time there. So there you have it, that's what I made of self-publishing by Emma Rosen. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.